How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be putting brakes on the Saturn. Brakes are a little bit past overdue. They should have been done a while ago. Um, been kind of lazy. So. so the equipment I'm using to jack up the vehicle, I'm using a 3.5 ton jack with two 2 ton jack stands. Jack stands are adequate. That's a little bit overkill for this car. But um, it's better to be safe than sorry. If you only have a sitter jack, sitter jack is would work but i would say they're not the best jacks they're also quite dangerous to use as they don't really hold the weight that well um because they were made of like just the cheapest the cheapest material and well, i don't want anybody getting hurt i recommend getting one of these bigger jacks can you maybe not a three and a half ton jack but any pump up hydraulic jack with a couple of jack stands you'd be set to go all right guys so when we're jacking up the vehicle uh we got the frame here and we got a pinch weld now you can go to the pinch weld, um, however, if the frame is available, I always try to go to the frame. It is stronger, supports a lot more weight since it's what's holding the whole car together. Versus the pinch weld, but if you're working on a vehicle, maybe not a Saturn, but let's say another vehicle and the frame is not easily accessible, then it'll be okay to use the pinch weld, but there is a chance pinch welds can fold, bend, break, due to many different things, so just be mindful of that. So after getting the vehicle safely supported on both jack stands, uh, holding onto the frame, I do have the jack going onto the subframe. Common issue on these cars is the subframes do like to rot away. Um, so if you have a Saturn and your subframe is rotting, don't support it from the subframe. The jack here is going to be just there. I got to tighten it once I get back up, but it's just going to hold the uh, weight just in case the jack stand fails. It'll be like a back. Uh, another way or backup safety device so the car won't fall on me all right and you do want to get the wheels chalked off and if you have an e-brake pull the e-brake but now the wheel should free spin uh, these are on all 19 millimeters my pittsburgh ratchet today and these are not lug nuts these are lug nut covers so you want to be gentle here and you don't want to break these so if you have a breaker bar, you can get a breaker bar and break them loose. Not really supposed to be on too tighter than 110 pounds, but just because the car's in the air, it's going to be hard to move it because the whole tire will start spinning. I'm going to use an impact gun. And just so I don't lose them, I'll put the lug nuts in the loose tray, but set it right by the jet. Then you want to get your tire, you're going to take it off and then put it underneath the vehicle. Bam. These things are as wavy as the ocean. Yeah, they were done. And see, I was debating if I needed pads or rotors. No, I needed the full shebang. Which I'm glad I'm prepared. I came prepared for this. I came prepared for this. So, now with the uh, tire all off, now we start working on the caliper. So in the back of the engine here, you got a uh, bolt here. And one that kind of matches it near the bottom would be right there, if I can get the camera to move right there. So it's definitely an 18, not anything standard. Just... Alright, so, I'm back. Yeah, you know, my three is after, so I just got an 18 on a half inch drive. And we got to pull it up. Up is the way to go. Make sure your wheels are chucked and your e-brake is set. Make it easier, let me just turn the wheel. So I was thinking maybe it's really retardedly hard to get to. So I got the bottom one. The bottom one came off of these. This top one. I'm not gonna put this on, but jeez. There we go. I gotta move a little bit. Yeah, whoever whoever do this needs to get a girlfriend. Alright, well, good news. I got it. Wait, not yet. Let me let's hit a point where you can loosen it with a ratchet. Which I'm gonna do that just now. And these are the caliber bolts, so the whole caliber should come off as one piece. But I don't want to loosen the bolt all the way because we still need to, get to take the caliper apart. So, so yeah, so you want to get these two bolts. They are 14. They might be a little tricky, but 
not as tricky as how the last one went. Using just a regular short breaker bar and a ratchet assembly. So I don't have to worry about breaking the ratcheting assembly on a ratchet. Ow. There goes my arm in the smithereens, but whatever, got it off. There we go. Sweet. Now sometimes these won't come off because in here there will be uh, like a like a bolt where you need to get like your adjustable wrench. Bolt. Boop. And it's one of your pins. I actually like how they put the threads on the same pin. It's all one piece. That's actually pretty cool. Pretty nifty. Ain't gonna lie. That's how I wanted my grandson to be like, but you know, whatever. Alright, now you want to wiggle it off set this caliper side somewhere where you don't kink up the line that right there should do nicely and I'm noticing I noticed it when I was taking my other part off that my sway bar bushing you know what that's on the control arm yeah all the bushings here in the steering are uh, actually starting to bust open can you see it yeah you, you should be able to see it so those are one of the get replaced in the future Nice to know. It seems like that's all and that's not going anymore. So, hopefully the best. Now we're gonna get the uh, the actual caliper off now. All right, well, this one will come off pretty easy. Bam, and you don't wanna lose these bolts. Make sure you uh, figure out where your bolts are at. Now your caliper, bracket should hold, and look at those pads. Look at those pads. I know probably when you guys were staring at them. Look at that. When I mean they were done, they were done. You see it? A little more pad on this side than that side, but you could say even with the crack in the middle of these, these were done. These were straight up done skis. And I knew they were done. They were making some of the most awful noise you can think of when you're going on the road. And I was like, yeah, I should probably change the brakes. So, this is all my fault, I know. And then your rudder should just come right off. One thing about these Saturn brakes is that even for such a small car, these brakes are still really small. You can tell with all those waves in it. Yeah, like that. It looks like the rings of Saturn. Um, that these like to warp really easy. So, I didn't get the cheapest rudders I possibly could have gotten. I got fancy ones from the Rock Auto. These are some of the higher class ones that weren't slotted. But they said something about how they do something to prevent rust uh, rust from getting on it and whatever. I don't know. They have a lot of claims about these things. And I'll put a link to these exact ones in the description if you want to use them. So you better believe I got them. And first of all, these look awesome. Got black on them with the uh, coating. Supposed to stop with the braking, hopefully preventing warping, because that's a, an issue that nobody wants to deal with. And the cool part is, is they got these little holes. Um, they don't have threads in them. Typically, they have threads in them, so if they get stuck on in the future. I live in a south, so you can tell the rust on this car is very um, minimal. But. Um, like places like up north when it gets really rusty you could put like little screws in there and they could pop the rotor back out so if it does get stuck on there but that's pretty cool now i'll clean this off i don't have a rag but it's fine i'm gonna spray off the uh, wax and coating they put on the ship bada bing bada bam now we will just start reassembling the uh, vehicle. Now one thing you want to do is you want to open your hood and take off your brake fluid cap because we're about to put a lot of pressure on the caliper and that fluid has to go somewhere. It's a hydraulic kind of type of fluid. So, or non-compressible fluid. So I'm going to take the cap off to let pressure come out of there so we don't create any possible leaks within the system somewhere. All right, so now I got that off. Now it's time for the caliper. So I got this fancy tool. Uh, high class, made of the most quality pieces of metal. Pretty sure I got this Walmart, but I got this tool 
like what? How long ago was it? About six years ago. It was five dollars and it still had lasted me. So, um, quality, yeah, because I've done a lot of brakes and stuff. Seems like every time I get a car, it needs brakes. So, right now I'm going to get this piston and I'm going to push it all the way in. So, you only use one of your old quality brake pads. I even straight up broke the noise squealer thing. That's crazy. Screw that down until it's all at the minimum. Put this bad boy in here and then you just screw it down. And then we're going to screw it down to get a little slack out. Okay, now we got slack. Now you just turn the handle. And with that cap off your brake master cylinder, go in nice and easy. Because you don't want to create any leaks anywhere in the system. Now, I'm turning this. Go nice and slow. If you feel like a lot of pressure, let off a little bit. Go a little bit slower. Don't just crank on it because, like I said, brake fluid is not compressible and it will escape somewhere. So you got to give it somewhere to escape. That's why I took the cap off. But uh, a lot of times it will break around the seal, which we're hoping won't happen. Nobody in Charlotte, at least nobody that I've seen, owns a Saturn. I'm like the only, like every time I go somewhere, people just know it's my car because it's like the only Saturn in the state. That right there is going to be good then. I can say, okay, yeah, make sure it's all nice and tidy, but it should work. Now, so we got that done. We're going to set that back down, and we're going to start working on the caliber bracket. So you got these little rubber seals. I don't know if they gave us replacements. I should probably check. And we got these, which we could probably take those out. But before we do all that, let's check with the power stop. I don't know why there's a date on here. Is that when I got them? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, but I got them before. Yeah. That's how long I've been putting this off since February 5th. Okay, brake pads. Do I even have hardware in here? What? How are you going to buy quality parts and you don't come with hardware? One second. Let me check this other box. So, yeah, I've been gypped of hardware. I don't have any more hardware anymore. I guess I gotta reuse the old hardware, which it's not the end of the world. It's fine. I prefer to have new hardware, but what you gonna do about it? Because uh, like I said, your brakes are overdone. I don't want to put the old ones in, and maybe we get the hardware and do them later. I don't know. Figure it out. But it's not a big deal. But when you get pads, you wanna get them in set. One set will have the squealer on it. The other side won't. Same with the other side. And you're gonna obviously get four sets. A squealer. That side doesn't have one. The one with the squealer will always be on the inside. The one without the and if you don't know the squealer is that little metal piece. So when you get low on your brakes, it makes a squealing sound. That's when it lets you know when your brakes are done. This one doesn't have it. That means this one sits on the outside. So the more you know. Great. Now we're gonna get the bracket with our brand new, gently used hardware. I'm kind of salty about, but you know, what am I gonna do about it? If I didn't do these brakes so late, maybe I would have caught it in time and said something, but nope. So now you want to reinstall it, put your bolt back in. You want to make sure your rotor's on for this because it is a good issue. The rotor keeps wanting to fall. You get a grip. I'm gonna get put this on and get a lug nut and go all the way down with it. Okay. All right, and start tightening the bolt down. Now, I didn't tighten these gorilla strings. I'm going to go back and do that later, but it's all nice and tight with a bracket. Won't move, so it's good for right now. All right, so now you can get your brake pads and you want to get your ultra brake part lubricant. And you want to go crazy. Go crazy! Ah, 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 go stupid! Ah, ah, go crazy! So, right on the little toes, just nice and lube that up. Same thing on the other side. On the hardware, since we're reusing it, we're going to put a generous amount of loop on that. I'm getting some all over the uh, rotor, which is fine. 
I mean, it's not, but we'll fix that. Boom. Thing's gonna be like riding on clouds. Now you wanna get it, and you wanna put your pad in place. Like that, and like that. Smooth. Smooth like sandpaper. Now, same thing, but on the inside one. Remember, the inside one has the squealer. Right on the inside. Smooth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move the caliper shell. I know I keep like renaming things. But you want to be able to put that right on the brake pads and it should be able to fit like a glove. Look at that, like a glove. First try. Okay, I already see a little pain with these little rubber feet things. That normally there's that metal piece to kind of keep them straight but now they're flopping around like dead fish in the log look at me figuring it out now we got both pins in it's going to both pins in it's going to hold the caliper part so now we get our extra brake part lubricant but we take the brush aside I sure don't need the brush because I'm running low on this stuff get a good amount and then just all over this thing yep Do not even think about being gentle. You want this stuff to be extra lubricated. Don't get on the threads, just get on the, the not threads. Then you stick it in there. That'll figure out what's too much, not you. And then just screw it in. Well, bam, now do the same thing with this one. Pull that thing out. And if it has a lot of like uh, lube on it still, just wipe some of the old one off, put it in there, move it around, take it back out keep wiping it down until you get a little bit on there and then put some new grease on there don't want to drop and drop this bad boy to get this and our lovely 14 millimeter now we just go to town all right bam Now, if you look up north and stuff, anti-seize on the rotor where how the rotor hits the hub might be a good idea. And on these bolts might be a good idea. But like I said, I live in the south. You saw how easy it was for all this to come apart. All right, now with those nice and tight, you want to switch back to your old uh, breaker bar. You want to come up on these uh, caliper bolts, the main ones. You just want to just, you just want to, you just want to crank on them. Because you do not want these bolts coming loose at all. All right, now I mean, we're pretty much done with just this side. Now, I won't make you guys sit there and watch me do the other side because I know you guys are just so, so eager to watch me. But I don't, I don't want to do that to you guys. But before we do that, we're going to keep finishing up this side. Now... Since we, what we did, what we did with the compression to the cap off, we don't have to bleed it, which is a good thing. And since your tire's off your car, it's gonna be a bad time to look at it, check for any, um, not even wear or anything. It's wearing pretty even. Um, it's not starting to chop or anything. We still got plenty of tread left, so that's always good. But always check when the tire's off because easier to check it then when it's still in the car. And I'm not gonna put the plastic cover on them because I wanna not only I'm you wanna retorque them, but I'm not gonna retorque them because I don't have my torque stick with me because it's off getting calibrated. Well now, but I wanna leave it here so that I can at least recheck it with a breaker bar. Oh you can't even see what I was doing. Just tighten the wheel down. I'm leaving the cap off so I can go back and retighten it with a breaker bar.
I did notice that when I was taking this pin out, this rubber seal was bad. And it sits right here, and so now this pin was all dry. Uh, I don't have the things to fix this right now, but that's something I'll have to do in the future. Oh no, it just sits right back on. Yeah, but there's a lot of dirt and stuff inside there, so you'll make sure it's clean. Apparently, we'll sit back on. I don't understand about it, but these are like some of the small things you'll look for because you want to make sure it's always grease. And this came out, this came out almost with like rust on it. No bueno. I'm glad I looked at this when I did because this could cause some future damage. Now, since we pressurized it, a lot of fluid came out, and that's at the very top. So now what you want to do is always keep the lid on, it's the dirt and stuff don't get in. You want to move the lid aside, you want to go inside the vehicle and press the brakes. Car off, you want to hit the brakes, you want to pressure them all the way down. It's going to go all the way down to the floor because there's no brake lines in it. Release, press it again, and everyone has some resistance. Do this a couple times. Push on it until you got some resistance. Great, now, all right, since now we have power, our brakes going through the brake lines, turn the car on, let it run, e-brake is still on, wait a second, and now what you're going to do is press your brakes again, press and hold on them, you're pressing and holding, now your foot goes all the way down to the floor, no matter how fast, even if it's slow, and, and you go until your top of your toes here, touch the floorboard and you have a leak somewhere and you're leaking brake fluid. Right now I'm putting pressure on it. I'm not going down to the floor, it's staying where it's at. Come up, do it again. Goes down, stays where it's at. We're good. Our brakes are now primed and ready to use. Alright, and I did uh, take the vehicle. I did jack it down. So after jacking it down, or taking it off the jacks, I'm going to sit here at the breaker bar. Actually these are tight. That's good. I'm gonna go in a cross pattern. I still, even though it's not on the jacks anymore, it's, I still have it on my uh, wheel chalk is still there. Not on the hill, but. All right, put it nice and tight. I'm gonna do the other side. There's a brake fluid level, it's going back low. It is looking a little dirty, so it might need to be changed in the future. Maybe that's uh, another video, preferably. But if you do need to fill up uh, your brake fluid back up, make sure you use the right fluid. Typically it's on the cap. This right here needs dot three. I'll show you on the cap. All right there, dot three. But that right there is the easy guide to how to change brakes. Well, on the Saturn S series. Now a lot of people who own these cars, these are their first cars, and an easy car to own and operate. And hopefully the the guide on how to change brakes was not only informative, helpful, but also um, also easy to follow along. If you do have any troubles or any questions, watch the video again. Still have questions, let it know in the comment section. I'll be sure to answer it. See you guys in the next video, and see you then. Now, the Saturn video won't be complete until we uh, check the oil and see what the oil level is like.
still right at full. Put it all in after longer. Alright, now this video is complete.